We're very fortunate today to have a graduate of the program, James. Do you want to go ahead and come up? He's going to share his story with us. Add the sidebar comment. I understand now why there's no fashion show this year. You all are the fashion show. The outfits in here are phenomenal. Welcome. Thank you, everybody. Um, seen many, many familiar faces and many faces that aren't so familiar but would like to get familiarized with you guys. As you guys heard, my name is James and I graduated the CARE program over a year ago. Uh, February 1st was my discharge day. Um, and I would like to just say a couple thank yous. Uh, thank you for those that have housed me over the week past weekend. I come from Champaign, and so that was one thing that needed to be taken care of. And I'd also like the board for inviting me to thank the board for inviting me back to once again share my story with all of you. So thank you. So as you guys know. Um, my name is James, and I'm going to be 20 in less than two weeks. Um, and a year ago, I was living just 2,000 feet from the care, uh, from here at the care residential facility at One Hope United. Uh, just let me share a little bit about my life and, and how I come to live at One Hope United and what I did in that year that I was gone. At the age of three, I was moved from the biological family of the Hills House in Rockford, Illinois. I was separated from two of my older sisters that are now living with a loving, caring family in Rockford. I want to live with the foster family. Even though I do not remember quite so much about the foster experience, I thought it would be the best thing for me. But that was until I, me and my two, my two sisters and I got adopted to a family in Rock Grove, Illinois. In that house, I experienced a great range of abuse that ranged from physical, mental, emotional, and the worst of all, sexual abuse. The physical abuse was just more than spanking. It was the constantly hit in the face, hit with numbers of items from belts to wire hangers, and had things thrown into my face. I was thrown into walls and slept into a room without heat. I have scars to prove it. Besides the physical abuse, it was also very, very mental. When I was getting trained, as my adoptive parents called it, I was not allowed to look at anybody in the eyes. I still cannot look into anybody in the eyes. When people ask me about it, I have to tell them the reasoning why I can. I was locked in my room for many days at a time, forced to go to the bathroom outside the, in, in my closet or out the window. Meals were meals, if any, were constant peanut butter sandwiches. So what I did is I ate the best thing that was there, paint chips with lead in it. My teachers tried to help and I praised them for helping, but the system did nothing. I finally left that abusive house by way of saying things like, I'm gonna hurt you, I'm gonna hurt myself, just to leave that abuse but I still feel guilty that I left my two other sisters in that house. That is when my adoptive parents took those two sisters down to Florida and left me in Illinois to be put once again back into the system at the age of 13. That's when I ended up in a shelter for boys in, P in uh, Palatine, Illinois. I later contacted one of my sisters that had contact with another sister in Florida and said the abuse did not stop with me. I called the Florida Abuse Hotline with as much information as I had available. I did Google searches on where they could possibly be living, workplaces where the adoptive parents could possibly be working, but the operator on the phone once again said, we do not have enough information to do anything, not even a sheriff visit once again let down. After that, I went to another foster family in Rock City, Illinois. That is when I started acting out in anger, imitating the behavior of my foster brothers. It, was an unfor it is an unfortunate fact that due to anger and frustration, the, abuse, the abused often becomes the abuser. My next step when, was a group home in Aurora where I was once again taken advantage of by the boys that lived in that facility. 
When I first came to live at One Hope United, formerly then I was known as Kids Hope United, so I had a very strong feeling that my life was about to change for the better, and it did. The Cary Residential Program is not all fun, but if you have fun your whole life, what lessons do you learn from fun? It was the One Hope United staff that stressed the importance of school, and I would be the first one in my, in my siblings to ever graduate from high school, and even did it early. The biggest lesson that I have learned from One Hope United, from the staff, from the supervisors, to the people that work at the different administration building, is that you cannot give up on these youth, on these young adults. Because every adolescent deserves a second chance at this crazy game called life. I'm currently a mass communication major and along with a social work major at Parkland Community College up in Champaign. And I'm also part of a DCFS funded youth advisory board that where I educate and advocate for all youth in care. And when I say all youth in care, and back in 2004, the DCFS in Illinois and the state legislators at that time were, were just signing a bill called the Sibling Bill of Rights, which guaranteed sibling visitation throughout the whole state of Illinois. Sadly, in 2011, there are many, many states do not, that do not have that as a law. I am working with the youth in Hawaii and on many, many phone calls with their youth advisory board to try to urge their legislators to make this a bill. I would love to see it brought up on the federal level, on the federal senate, to make this a federalized bill because all of you deserve to see their siblings if they have any. Yeah. I know firsthand experience that the system, there are so many things to change, but it's a very good system and it's a very good start. Child abuse needs to be taken very, very seriously. Abusive parents should not just be able to take the children to another state and thereby escaping jurisdiction, as happened with my abusive parents, took my sisters down to Florida. Therapy, many, many types of therapy are needed to allow these youth the opportunity to speak and have a voice in what would happen to them. They need to know that it's okay to speak against their abusers, to trust somebody who cares about them, and understand them importantly to give them hope and the tools that they need to improve their future. I know that I am only one person, but with one person with a dream can accomplish great things. It is time for Americans, young and old, to stand up for the rights of those that cannot stand up for themselves. We need to fight for stricter laws against those that were that those who abuse children. We need to, we need stricter laws to prosecute child abuse. This is my passion to see this happen. We need to fight for those that cannot fight for themselves out of fear. Stand up for those that, that, that cannot stand due to fear. And speak for those that cannot speak because of fear. I got out alive, I got out alive, but not everybody is as lucky. I may have been a victim of child abuse, but I refuse to be a victim one more time. When I turn on the television and see another child has died because of abuse, I feel like I was the one that was hurt. When I see policymakers in Springfield and in D.C. make laws that affect youth, you can count on me to be there. These youth have a voice. These youth need a voice in the House of Representatives, the Senate, and the Governor's office along with the President's office. Do not let these young leaders of the country down. I urge you to take a stand with me, with One Hope United, in our fight to protect children and strengthen families. Thank you so much. You guys have been a great help.